This episode has been sponsored by Skillshare. Welcome to Crimson Guitars, welcome to my home studio, welcome to day six of a one day build. Day six, day seven, I'm not sure. Which is it, Talitha? So uh, where we currently stand is a Boba Fret Star Wars inspired guitar. And uh, we've got a uh, multi-laminate flame maple through neck with sapili, not sapili, with mahogany wings, a rosewood top with a further aluminium top uh, cut away to create a, a double body kind of an effect. We've got a vintage original Bond Electroglide heavily anodized step fretboard, uh, therefore no frets, etc., with some Abalone inlays installed. It is a headless tuning system, so the tuning is all done at the base, but we still have a head because this particular tuning system has uh, locks that basically look and feel uh, kind of like tuners. So. We've gone halfway to a headless, to a headless system. Um, the end result though is, how many times in the last 30 seconds have I said the end result? Burn it. I'm having fun. Hey, yeah. On the computer in the background is uh, my sister Talitha rather than my wife Tanya because being Valentine's Day she just desperately doesn't want to spend any time with me and I fully understand that. Uh, no, Tanya is off doing something important. Uh, she will uh, show up I think potentially uh, for a little bit later but uh, we'll see how that goes. So say hello Talitha. Hi guys, how are you doing? So we, we, we spent some time last week making an aluminium nut for this build and it's just gone because it's not where I thought it was there. Yeah, no, Max is saying, no, you put it there. You dropped it and then put it right there. Maybe I put it in the, in the drawer. Ah, ha, 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 Max, you are the MVP. Max, dude, my man. I'm gonna put the nut here in front of the Atom Mini Pro. There we go, wedged in place with a piece of brass. We've got this back plate that uh, uh, I played around with last time and it's, it's not ideal because actually there is too much of a gap on this side. It fits where I need it to here, but that curve, because I was doing it by hand with rasps and things, it's just a little bit too gappy. And that curve there starts out gappy and doesn't go. So let's fix that, shall we? Uh, first of all, I need to make just a little bit more of a gap on the smaller curve. There's something like that. Here we go, we've got a, a fine, uh, me uh, it's a medium, a half round Taranty rasp. And I'm just carefully, Taking off a little bit more material. So the best way to hide a mistake is to accentuate it. I want to glue on a couple of small sections of uh, aluminium to highlight those two curves and uh, that will fill the gap and look, I think, pretty damn cool. I had momentarily lost my tin snips. <laughs> I'm not following the line, I tell you. Uh -huh. I tow the line. <laughs> I walk the line, sorry, I should have said. So we've got a, a chunk of uh, chunk of metal. Hello, neighbor's cat. You are famous. I'm just gonna straighten this out and uh, go from there. So what I'm gonna do now is just on the workbench, just, I'm not hammering, I'm just drawing it out and flattening it up a little bit. I 
I'm scratching up, keying up the back of this aluminium to give it something to glue to. And a uh, scalpel blade to do the same thing. First try. Gloves. Every single build throws up these little things that don't necessarily do what you're expecting them to do, but, but create opportunities for, uh, for artistry and originality. And, you know, this, what I'm doing right here, gluing the aluminium onto the side of the, of the, the back plate, the inlaid control plate, um, the original thought that occurred to me last week before I'd even cut the plate was that I could was that it could be quite attractive to glue thicker strips of aluminium around the around the side of the whole guitar in exactly the same fashion and I'm still relatively tempted to do just that So this is five minute epoxy that I'm using. So it's not gonna to take too long. The only thing I am having to be absolutely aware of is where, is that the, the aluminium is uh, perfectly <sighs> centered, shall we say. So I've still got a little bit of this epoxy. We've got a, a, a bit of a cavity there. That is curing in the in that nut, knot hole, and that's cool. Well, that's an option. Another one is just to scrape it off. Now, somebody in one of the comments suggested that I sand back the edge of the fretboard so the edge of the fretboard is silver. Could you set up please a, a poll to see what people think about that? Silver fretboard edge or nay? Nay! I'm in a good mood today. Fifteen seconds to close that pole, and then tell me what the uh, uh, what the uh, result is. Closing the pole now. Fifty-six percent say yes. Fifty-six percent say that I need to sand down the edges of the fretboard to to, to silver. I I like it. I am a massive fan of learning. It is, 
it defines me, period. Skillshare is an online platform ad-free with millions of creatives and makers of all stripes enjoying classes, being inspired by classes on a myriad of subjects. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so that you can start exploring your creativity today. It's curated for learning, there's no adverts. There are now even subtitles in French and Spanish and Portuguese and German. So while I'm watching an English one, I could have Portuguese subtitles on and maybe also be learning Portuguese. It's a great platform. I am sincerely a fan of it. At the moment, I'm going through a class with Justin Bridges, the fundamentals of DSLR photography, and uh, he's, uh, he's actually got a few more. So I think I'm gonna be there for a little while in one. Under an hour class, I learned more about proper photography than in 20 years of making videos. I've just not been paying attention. That's it. Other classes include accountancy and self-development and videography and marketing and you name it, it's probably there. Check it out. Now, on with the bill. So I've got a uh, Crimson Guitars leveling beam here, it's nice and flat, and I'm starting just at the angle to see what happens if I just remove just the angle. I think that could look quite cool. I'm being very careful to match the angle that was already there. I don't want to make this any more acute. I love that. What do you think? Uh, let us know in the comments. I think at that stage, we call it done. Is that not cool as? Okay, that is good. I'm happy with that. It's raining horrifically now. I was just wondering which camera do I point out at the, at the rain to show you guys. Now, this is a very strange scale length, I recall. Six fifty four. Wow. That's some serious adjustment there. I like that. Uh, so, yeah, that does that. And then I've still got enough room to uh, to use it as a trim. Uh, if so required. Yep, so I think that's where I'm where I'm sitting. Okay, so we have 
strings and things. A little threaded insert with a hardened steel, I hope, string post. And you need to basically figure out where the center of that string post is going to be when the, the bridge is pivoting on it. So that's my bridge line there. And that there is the center of that. All I need to do is draw that line square. And we're good. So there's the center of that. I am now 99% certain that this is exactly where I want the bridge to be. I've marked everything out and I'm now going to double check. Okay, I am happy, I am happy that that is now in the correct position. <clears throat> and I sincerely hope that that statement does not come back and bite me in the proverbial uh, later on. Now, this is the fun bit. We have a 10.2, yeah, a 10.2 millimeter threaded insert. And I think it's probably an M5 thread, but 10.2 uh, millimeters. So really what I want to do is drill out 9.5 uh, initially and then open it up a little bit. But uh, I'm going to find my 9.5 mil bit. I do have the aluminium to deal with as well. Okay. So that's 9.5, and I reckon that's probably gonna be too tight. Yep, absolutely. Too tight. Now, I'll try a 10 and see what that does. I'm going to have to get through the aluminium first. Actually, Actually, 10 seems fine. So I'll start out with the pilot hole. As my intelligence level drops, it means I'm closer to needing food. So, uh, so there we're at. What I'm worried about is using a 10 millimeter uh, twist drill, and as it pulls through the top layer of the aluminium, I'm worried that it's gonna grab the aluminium and spiral out of control. Now, a twist bit is designed for metal in general and I do think that it will work but uh, what I'm considering I'm considering going in with this baby and that there is 10 mil if I'm not mistaken yep so it's that's 10 mil and uh, the only issue I've got is how deep that would be it would actually take me through the back of the of the guitar and I don't want that. So the option is to grind that off or possibly ha, ha, have multiple tools that do the same thing. That's my 10 mil and that's closer in.
There we go. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this bit. Step drill bits. Relatively inexpensive. Incredibly useful in the strangest of places. Uh, if this goes wrong, I will disavow them. No, um, they're generally designed for going through sheet metal. That's what they're for. But I use them for all, all sorts of things from uh, jack sockets and uh, just, just all over the place. <sighs> drilly drilly. And look at that. PPE. That was four mil. Eight mil. Actually, I think there was four and six and eight. The other thing I don't want to do is warm this up too much. It's centered, it's exactly where I wanted it to be. I could use, I could be using the pillar drill, but it's away in the corner and I need to resituate it to be honest. Moving with more confidence now, the luthier attacks the guitar. You're narrating yourself. Okay, so I have gone just through the aluminium with the 10 mil section of the step drill. Okay, and it's gonna be a little warm. Before this goes in the drill bit, I need to know, in the drill, I need to know how deep to drill and mark directly on the drill bit where I want to go. And then I take it just a little bit deeper. So now what I'm doing is I'm trying to drive full force into a hole that's actually different sizes. What I need to do is stop and eat. What I need to do is go uh, six mil down to full depth, then eight mil down to full depth, or even go up in millimeter increments, uh, potentially while um, running the drill backwards. Uh, I'm back, I've got some energy. Thank you very much for feeding me, darling. Mm -hmm. now, let's go with a seven mil. And a six mil. Eight. And nine. So let's just do that for now. And I might need to add some more as we go along. Goggles. Okay, so I'm going into a hole that's a millimeter bigger than the drill bit. So start the drill in reverse. 
when you start drilling and then hopefully, there you go, nice and easy. Now if I go straight in, it grabs and tries to chip out, although in this case it was soft enough and worked. Last one. Now just to stop any potential deformation around the aluminium here, which is going to be visible. <clears throat> I want to drill that out to 10.5. Except I don't have a 10.5 millimeter drill bit in this workshop. Poop. There we go. Let's cool the whole thing off. Yeah. I could just bevel it a little bit. Let's do that. Let's just use a giant a giant countersink. That is done. So the the teeth, as it were, of that are actually grinding away the aluminium. That's really cool. <laughs> okay, how can we do this better? Uh, whoops, oh shit, I just broke it. Oh no. Oh no. Well, there we go. That is, I've just discovered, a hardened steel insert. Um, it's a good thing I've got a few more in the back of my van. You've just watched me do something very silly. I hope you're happy now. I do have spares and I can get, uh, yeah, I can get more, that's not a problem. That was not quite as catastrophic as it uh, could have been. They're all shouting at you. Did anybody uh, foresee that issue? Um, I don't know, They're in their minds perhaps. Okay. So at this stage, that is now prepared and good and ready. I'm gonna put the rest of these things in here and uh, Later on, when I need to go up to the house, I will uh, grab a spare. I'm very lucky, very, very lucky. Like, inestimably, I think that's a word, lucky that I actually do have a spare uh, here. If not, that would cause some serious trouble. So this, it's a five minute cure epoxy and it's pretty much done at this stage. We've been filming now for nearly three hours, so it's been curing for, say, two and a half, I would say. Yeah, good stuff.
I, the last thing I want to do is delaminate what we've been waiting a couple of hours to cure. So, uh, yeah, I'll just let that sit and sit and percolate for a bit. Side dots, I just want to put in some very thin aluminium tube. Uh, I'm not sure what the hell it is actually. It might even be silver solder. Mm. I don't know. Might even be silver. Who knows? But uh, this is what we're going to use. 1.5 millimeters. Okay, so I've used the, the drill bit as normal there where it reaches. But from that point on, I need to use a, a pin vise. Now you could take that off and just put that in the drill and it should work. Uh, or you just tighten it all up and do it by hand. So there we go. Little pin vise set. I got this through ooh, a little LS Starrett and Co. Limited pin vise set. Um, I'll have you know. Uh, flex. Uh, yeah, I got it through Vintage Tool Shop, uh, which is now a, an official part of CrimsonGuitars.com. And I just want to see how the flush trim cutters do work. Now. As you cut it, it does deform and deflect and all of that nonsense. And it does still have a tiny, tiny, tiny little notch, but this is not dissimilar as a material to nickel silver. And uh, yeah, it works. So I'm just going to go the easy route and glue it in like that and then snip it off. There's some super glue on that. dip and install. Have you had any major accidents with superglue? Have I had any major accidents with superglue? You know full no, I'm not talking about well, the accident. I'm talking about... What do you mean the accident? I've got it in my eyes twice. Okay. Because I suck. Uh, no, putting an inlay in onto a fretboard and then hammering down onto it. If, it's a, if, it's, um, if you're not covering the whole inlay with the hammer, it tends to spurt up. I can tell you, however, that uh, what you need to do is not close your eye. Stick your finger in your eye, and then and the super glue doesn't adhere to the to your eyeball because your eyeball's wet, and it'll stick to your finger though if your finger's dry, and it'll just come out. Do not get it on your eyelids. Public safety announcement. Woohoo! Like butter. I know what I'm doing. Directly onto the aluminium. I'm not going to start saying aluminium because even if I do it, ironically, I'm going to start doing it and not meaning it. Okay, so that there. Let's leave it a little bit bigger because we can always cut that down. That was quite cool. Okay, so that's marked out now. 
Come on. Somehow I jumped out of my slot there. That's not good. Nails who stick their head up will get beaten down. I mean, that's done it. That's just meant to be have another day. Just that one incident. No other reasons. Not to prevarication in what? level one. I, just, I hear nothing. Buzz. Buzz. So the trick is that I am currently very loosely holding onto the handle here. If the blade sticks in the aluminium, my hand is almost going to want to let go. If you've got a death grip on it... It's the aluminium moving against the blade. Wow. If you've got a death grip on it, <laughs> then... Uh, you're going to break more blades. So it's looking good. Yeah. Okay, so now... There was a time in my youth when I was using oh. one of these, and uh, I honestly don't remember And my remember hand was no, 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 no. And my hand was flat down, holding whatever I was working on. And I was cutting here, and you came up behind me. You came up behind me, and you kicked me so hard that my scalpel blade cut all the way through my fingernail, from one end to the other, and eventually the fingernail fell off, and there was blood everywhere and and it was it was it was horrific and both physically and mentally painful could you please explain to these 800 or so people what the f were you doing i honestly <laughs> don't remember that i only know it from your retelling <clears throat> so look at that face <laughs> yeah that was fun Uh, this is one of my favorite bits about this build. Uh, remember on the front of the guitar, we've got aluminium glued onto the rosewood and that's part of it. Okay, I'm gonna have them external because that fits the design and because I really, really, really like it. I want you guys to tell me, Talitha, if you could do a poll, whether we have screws going through to screw it down into the uh, cavity or whether we use magnets to hold it in place. If we use magnets, we're potentially gonna have to cut a notch in this area here for your finger to, to go to, to lift it up. Screws or magnet? Uh, what I have learned today is that I need to lose, use this uh, bow lube stuff on my saws and maybe even files a lot more often. The file. Well, I put a little bit too much on the file at start, it was a problem, but uh, 
yeah, I, I think that's really cool. Essentially, I need to sand this back plate down perfectly flat and get that prepared. Four o'clock, we've been live for four hours and 37, 38 minutes on the beep. That still needs some filing down and sorting out. And some tidying up. The neck is, you can still see a little bit of the faceting, that's gonna come up with the sanding. I've got to get rid of that, which we used to fill earlier. I love that carve there. It's actually surprisingly comfortable. I love the back plate as it's evolving. Basically, this is one of my favorite guitars of all time at this stage. And this is just the back. It is. Shall we end the latest poll? Uh, yes, end the latest poll. What was it about? Oh, magnets or screws, yes? Yep, 63% say magnets. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Predictable. Um, and that's a good thing. So that is ready for fine sanding. These side dots need to be filed down and sorted. So while we've got the vise up on here, let's get that done. what I need. I don't want to touch the aluminium sides, but that works. Uh, I think what I really want to do is uh, have a physical barrier there to stop me. So what I'm going to do now is take a, take that, yeah. There we go. And now I've got a physical barrier to stop me from scratching the fretboard. Aha! Success! Uh, I'm actually using the crowning file now and my thumb as the stop. Um, because I'm a fool. How? It hurts. <laughs> I take that back. I'm using I'm using the wood. I know what I'm doing. Honest. Oh no. That's in my ear. Okay, we're good. That people is called hamming it up. Bending it up. Phew. Okay, done. I'm filling this hole here with a little bit of brown super glue Ooh. and a little bit of black super glue. Just remember that uh, this whole guitar is going to be somewhat uh, messed around with a little bit later, so we're actually not after perfection. And then I'm just going to sprinkle some dust into it. And then you tap it in so that everything is uh, done properly. And there we've got a scar. That's a bit better. I think he's behind your bench. He is. Jasper. Greg Pearl says, imagine a universe far, far away, an alternate Ben Crow completing a build ahead of schedule. 
Ooh, that just doesn't work for me. Um, so the problem is that I've got the aluminium edge of the fretboard that I'm also trying not to do. So what I really need is a tiny triangular file. There we go. Okay, so this curve here has just got a little bit of waviness going on. Fine, out come the big guns. Sore asp. Eight millimeters. So I'm using a star M bit here. We are going to be gluing uh, a couple of pieces of aluminium to the external part of the plate, like so. Which means that I can actually drill a locating pin, a locating hole. And then now from the other side, I can, um, I can sort this out. Now, if I go all the way through, it doesn't actually matter, but I'm hoping I don't. No, nearly there. I want both of these magnets to basically face the same way down. So you need it to go, there you go, did you see that? It pooped. Boop. There we go. So yep, that's all good. We can just leave that there to, to do its thing. Accelerator. Okay, I chisel out a divot there. I push down there and it lifts the bottom up. I'm sort of worried about these two corners here uh, being an issue. This wood is a pleasure to work. There we go, it works. Fantastic. Okay, at this stage, this is the end of day what? Day what, Talitha? Tell me what day it is. Seven or six? Six. I think it's six. <laughs> it should say in the stream title in front of your face. Seven, day seven. What the poop, are you sure? <laughs> it says day seven, you typed it. It must be day seven. Seriously? Seven days in, pew pew! Day seven day. days into a one day build. And here we are, it's still not done. It's gonna be an eight day build. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Okay, we have now sorted out the side dots. The fretboard is done and dusted. We've accented on the edges of the fretboard. We've hurt our elbow. The top is done. I have yet to drill. The, con the controls and figure out what we're going to do with those. 
and on the jack plate, I've got to sand the entire guitar down, but we've filled some bits and pieces. We've made the back plate. We've made the little doohickey little bits that are gonna go on the edge of the back plate there to make it look pretty and cool, or even pretty cool. Uh, the headstock is done and finished and ready for final sanding. And, and we have still, to a certain extent, got our sanity. Thank you for watching. Click like, subscribe, tell your friends about this build, and most importantly, go and make some sawdust. That edge is a bit sharp, but it's fine. I'm all right. We're good. See you soon.